Hey, I'm glad you brought up Flip Mode Squad, and I'm glad you brought uh, this legend over here. Come on, we got the official Street Corner Colonel in the motherfucking Come on, man. Yeah. Split Star, nigga. Split Star. Hey, man. Come yes, on, sir. nigga. Come on, you a nigga. real nigga. You Bro. a real nigga, man. I'm so glad you brought him, because now I don't have to ask you why you didn't. Bro, this nigga, before we even ever heard this nigga say anything, was already a legend to me. Like, this nigga was so <laughs> funny in the Dangerous video. Oh, that's on God. That nigga yeah, crazy. He Split. Went crazy. Split, it, the reason why me and Spliff was so magical is because Spliff don't give a fuck neither. That's the beautiful thing about the way we was molded and shaped from a cultural standpoint. Like, we. We Caribbean niggas. I'm a Jamaican nigga, he a Trinidadian nigga. So the showmanship that we displayed, a lot of that shit come from dance hall culture. And, and I don't think people really understand this whole hip hop shit was birthed from Jamaica. Like Kool Herc is a Jamaican nigga. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The whole concept of having big ass speakers stockpiled on top of each other and playing loud ass music outside that come from Jamaica. That's dance hall culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Cool Herc brought dance hall culture to the U.S. and gave birth to hip hop culture. The only thing that changed was the type of music that was played and how it was played. <clears throat> but the concept is the same. So the, the thing about dance hall culture is the critics, the audience, the way they was raised, it was in a way where, and, and in particular, the Jamaican people are just a proud people. Like, them niggas is outspoken like a motherfucker. And my favorite name. If, you, if you make people <laughs> from Jamaica spend their money and come to a concert. They fuck with you. If they fuck with you, they gonna let you know. If they don't fuck with you, they gonna let you know in a way that you ain't gonna be able to understand, like appreciate, digest, or accept. Yeah, I Damn. did. I did comedy at Footprints in New York. Wow, that it's the Footpr whole Footprint crowd is legendary. Jamaica, and if they like you, they just stand there. If they don't, you, nigga. You don't think the shit going terrible, but then they just be like, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you get one of them. All you need is one. It can be from the most random person in the whole room. But that's, <laughs> you know you good. I think I would have got low. I would have been yeah, doing my right. shit whispering right. so right. loud. <laughs> nah, but if they don't like you, nigga, the orders is loud as fuck. Everybody in the club get busy. Yeah, bro. Bro. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but again, again, like I was saying, the reason why me and Spliff work so well is because Spliff come from the same thing. Yeah. And you know when we was shorties and we used to. Uh, you know, we cut school, we was going to the hooky parties and we was at the block parties on the block and all of that type of shit. You know, we was studying the dance hall shit, even though we was loving hip hop too. Right. The, the niggas that we studied was, was Shaba Ranks and, and Admiral Bailey and Papa Son and Lieutenant Stitchy and Lecturer, these Professor Nuts, these is dudes that was legends in dance hall culture and, mm -hmm. and reggae music and, and them dudes was the dudes that really taught you if you would sit back and just look at some of them videotapes and 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 listen to the, the sound clashes which was like the battles and shit, mm -hmm. and you would see the clashes that the artists would have at like sting sting was like a, a festival that they did every year and like ninja man and ninja all. man would go against Anybody and fucking the dance hall is a, the, but the dance the, the 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 big clash would happen at the end of like the fourth night. It'd be like four days straight I'm just dancing. of just wilding out 20, 30, 40,000 people out there, not going home and just partying. And those clashes is would would be so detrimental that some of them just led to violence on the stage and they could get his face bust right on stage because the disrespect would be so crazy. But the showmanship, the legs kicking all over the place, niggas jumping around the fucking place, you swinging your fucking hand, you, you all of that shit. Yeah. While dudes in hip hop thought it was cool to just walk around with your chain on and you just hold your Johnson and you think you're too cool to really do some shit that seem a little outside of the norm. Right. 
me and Spliff would look at niggas and just laugh because we knew we was going to come up there and mop the floor with their ass. Because when we get up there, we're going to do all of this extraterrestrial shit with all this other dynamite stick energy and fuck niggas up. Right. And that's, that's what was the cheat code all the time. So, you know, I'm, I'm for the first time really like getting into like the specifics of where the ingredients came from for me and Spliff. Like, like a testament to what he was saying. How's he felt like Spliff was a legend before Spliff said shit. He was. All right, cool. So it was the same way in, in East Flappers, Brooklyn. So when Spliff was mad small, Spliff was always a, a, like a, a loose cannon, a little loose screw up top. I can so, tell so, so, so I can Spliff, see his videos. Yeah, Spliff, Spliff was crazy, but I ain't just talking about on an on a entertainment and a showmanship side. Spliff was also a crazy motherfucker on some street shit. Well, then. So, I felt like the talent that he was showing just organically, like Spliff one time got into a motorcycle accident and he split his shin bone down this way. Yep, yep. That that one leg shit that you see niggas doing yeah, to this man. day, like the, Spliff the, created the, 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 the pop smoke, it, 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 the, all them niggas. Yeah, but I ain't gonna say he created it because it's a it dance hall, like when they used to call it like skanking, uh -huh. right? And 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 the, the the old rosters would do this one foot shit, but Spliff now he turned it into a big thing on the hip hop side because and in the funny shit, this is how all right, so Spliff he's swerving in the street right. on a fucking spree moped, <laughs> right? That's when the sprees was the shit. Any and nigga doing this and doing this and the nigga curved out too far, tried to go around a double parked car and he ain't clear the car. Full speed, nigga slap in front of the in the, in the back of the double park car. Nigga flip by six foot, seven foot in the sky. Land the way he landed, the shin bone split down this way instead of crossway. Right. So you look into this this nigga leg got a bone sticking out this way. So split, he's he on the street. <sighs> split the one crying for the niggas. Ambulance come. He don't want to crack. Spliff ain't crying in front of no nigga. What the fuck you talking about? Ambulance come, put Spliff in the back of the ambulance. When the door closed, you hear Spliff screaming as the ambulance comes <laughs> 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 oh, so, 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 a couple, <laughs> a couple days later, you know, Spliff come out, he got the cash on, big block party outside in the, oh, on the block. Shit. And scratch a toy with DJ. He was a super young nigga on the block, but was nice with the fast shit and tried to learn all the Jazzy Jeff transforming Great. shit and all of that, learned all of that. So he was down with a crew called TNT Crush and them niggas had the block locked, had the neighborhood locked. Their system was super stupid, so they was getting booked to do all the local shit. And Spliff, with his showmanship, he like, fuck my broke leg. I'ma still pull up in the middle of these niggas that's trying to do all their little dance shit. And then they go on the crutches and the nigga just start doing the one foot shit <laughs> with the fucking <laughs> cash. <laughs> and niggas is around him in a circle and he bodying this shit with the way he's spinning around on niggas with the cross, with the crutches on and the, the cast on and he carrying on. And I seen this shit and I like, this nigga's incredible. At the time, I'm back and forth between Brooklyn and Long Island. Right. I'm fucking with leaders. And, um, when leaders broke up, I always was like, I'm gonna need, cause I was so used to the group and the group support Family system on stage, yeah. I was like, all right, I got, I'm gonna do this solo shit, but um, I'm gonna need to figure this out and I'm gonna get that down to fuck with me and just follow my lead cause I know what I wanna do. Spliff at the time was still in the street. It's even before I was able to buy my own V. I come to Brooklyn, Spliff all the time. He was getting his money in the street and was still getting into trouble in the street. In and out of jail, what type of shit. Got shot a couple times. But I was seeing this talent and I was just like, I, ho I hope that I could get or garnish enough success to save this man life because I knew Bruce, Bruce since I was seven. And now I'm in a position where I got a deal and this might be the only way to save, bro. He was willing to listen, though. That's 
Oh, and Say that one more time. That nigga was willing to listen. You mm. know what I'm saying? That's, that was the most important part. And he was listening at a time when he was already getting his own money. Because right. right. he was right. giving me rides to the studio. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I needed to get to the stool, he was my whip. You know what I'm saying? One time we going to the studio, nigga had the gray 325 or the blue one. Was it the blue one? The blue th blue three. Th All right, so we ride into the stool. Bang! We get into a wild car accident. Nigga left the shit right there. We break out. The next day, nigga pulled up in a gray one. You need a you need a ride to the studio today, nigga. Hell no, nigga, not after last night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick, nigga. Train. I'm good, nigga. I'm not in, nigga. You ain't catching no train, no. Nigga, them rats. I'm getting in that car. Nigga, them rats will bite you. But, but, but that's, 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 that's my brother on a whole nother level when it comes to just, and he, he's my elder. He's, he's a year older than me. But it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing when, you know, motherfuckers could respect each other enough to still be able to say, all right, you know what, bus? If this was the street shit, you would have to listen to me. Right. Yeah. But this music shit, I'm going to I'm gonna listen to you. I ain't always got to be you the driver. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you sit in the passenger seat and mm -hmm. let the person who know how to drive this road drive it. Real shit. Real you know shit. what I mean?